We promised. We promised that if he forgave us, we would accept him as our God and serve him. I want to read you something here. Urgently, we need a revival of personal godliness. This is indeed the secret of church prosperity. When individuals fall from their steadfastness, the church is tossed to and fro. When personal faith is steadfast, the church abides true to her Lord. Sounds like that had been written today, doesn't it? But it wasn't. It was written by Charles Spurgeon. That was just a couple days ago. So don't think the, the fight we face now is any different than what we've, that we've fought with before. We still fight with Satan, right? He still wants you, Odie. He wants you back. Because he wants John. And he wants Roscoe. And he wants Larry. And I can go through all of us. He wants us all. Because what a prize we would be for him to have tasted and saw how good God is. And to make the choice, not accident, make the choice to walk away and go back to him. Tonight, you see the screen up there. It says, Steadfast and Sure. That's in a song. I can't remember the rest of the lyrics, but I know that it thrills my heart when I think about being steadfast and sure. And when we think about steadfast, what do we think about? We think of, I think of a mailbox post or an oak tree. Maybe an oak tree, a little more than a mailbox post. I'm thinking about the one I hit a long time ago, and it stayed true, Odie. It was, must have been deep and in concrete. Not movable. Not going anywhere. That's what I think. Can we be that way? What if we're not that way? What if we messed up? We start again, right? Will he forgive me if I messed up? Well, let's talk about a guy. Can we talk about a guy? He decided it was a good idea for him to look out of his rooftop and see some woman down in her bathtub hanging out thinking, hmm, hmm. What happened? Come on up here. Come to my house. You've got to get rid of her husband. <laughs> right? And what happens? He sends him off to the front lines. He's killed. She's pregnant. Probably not in that order. And now Nathan's called him out on it. Then he puts pen to paper and he comes up with these words. We're going to read a few verses here out of Psalms 51. We'll start at verse 10. While you're looking it up, in regeneration, nature is not ruined but rectified. The convert is the same man but new made. The faculties of his soul are not destroyed but they are refined. The same violin, but newly tuned. Christ gave not the blind man new eyes, but new sight to the old ones. Christ did not give Lazarus a new body, but livened his old body. So Christ in his conversation doth not bestow a new understanding, but a new light to the old. Not a new soul, but a new life to the old one. We're still going to remember the stuff we dealt with. We're still going to fight those fights, but he can fix it. Verse 10 says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Let's pray. Lord, we love you, and we thank you so much for the work that you're doing in me. It's not done. We thank you for never failing. We thank you for always being there. We thank you for the promises that you come true on every day. We thank you for allowing us to be here behind this sacred desk to preach to your people one more time. We ask you, Lord, use me as a willing vessel to preach to your people. Open the scripture up to our mind and help us to see what you've got for us. We love you and thank you. Amen. So David's writing here, create in me a clean heart. I would love to create a clean heart right here. 
because I've ate stuff that's not good for me and I've done things that aren't good for me and I'd like to clean this thing out, but you know what? I can't do that. I can't do that. Richard had his hooking out and cleaned up, replumbed and everything. He, it can be done, but I can't do it. But he can. And it's just as simple as asking him to do it. Oh, no, that plaque and that whatever still in there. But it's what is written on that heart that has been changed. You see, I'm not the CEO that I used to be. I'm not. I don't do the things I used to do. I don't go the places I used to go. Why? Because I've been cleaned up. Now, that's not saying that just one decision couldn't send me right back in those places. Because I can choose that. Sometimes I wish I didn't have free will, Richard. It would be a whole lot easier. Can we mess up as Christians? Can we fall flat on our face as Christians? Can we read that verse again and pray that prayer again and he, and he cleans us up again? How do I know that? Because he's done it to me. Not to me, but for me. Over and over and over again. I got, I got saved as a kid. And I went through uh, this, um, they're still doing it over the Christian school, this quiz rally stuff. Man, they called, they said that the CEO didn't stand for Charles Oliver. It stood for computer output because I was lights out on that quiz. You know what happened? I still messed up. I still walked away. Why? The information was there. The information was right here. But the relationship wasn't right here. I knew what to do. But I didn't know why I needed to do it. That I, I, I would have been told. But I'm a teenage kid. You can't tell me nothing. How do I know that? How do I get reminded of that? Don't look over there. He acts just like his mother. Talk about kids from another, yeah, acts like his mother. Create in me a clean heart. Step one. That is step one. Because if my heart's not clean, my spirit can't be clean. If I can't have, oh man, I've talked about this before. We're going to get into it again. You ever see me get angry? Don't you say yes, Charlie. <laughs> it happens. I'm working on that. And I got help. But he didn't see the angry before I got my heart clean. He didn't hear the words that come out of this mouth. You couldn't just hear him. You could see the blue. Not proud of that. Don't misunderstand me. But that's where he brought me from. That's where he brought me from. That's what he changed me from. And now, what's the spirit? I had a spirit of, you never met anybody like me. And I'm going to show you just what I'm capable of. Now, I'm not that way. Now, I'm just crazy CEO. A little different than everybody else. Well, a lot different than most. But he changed that. He put in a, took out that spirit of, 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 of um, I don't know, pride. I don't know what I'd better be proud of. Some dumb old hillbilly from Adams County. What's that to be proud of? But he took out that spirit of pride. He took out that spirit of cockiness. And he put in a spirit of love. He put in a spirit of kindness. He put in a desire to help people. Look what I do for a living. I did it before, but for different reasons. He gave me a desire to tell the truth. To be honest, even when it hurts. But that's not the right spirit we're talking about here. We're talking about a steadfast spirit. The, the, the commentary, that one of the commentaries I was reading today what says, says it just like this intentionally determined to always honor God. That means this right spirit is not that kindness or that niceness or that honesty or any of those things. 
It is an intentional, deliberate choice to seek whatever outcome, whatever I can do in the situation to bring honor to His name. That means, okay, I told you about this a couple month, about a month and a half ago. There was a television show that I was watching. And God said, hey, you don't need to watch it anymore. I had a choice to make. Do I bring honor to His name? And I tell you all about it? And then I go sneak and watch it at home? I could do that. We could do that. But I chose no. I chose I'm going to honor Him by following Him. It says honor thy father and thy mother, right? If I didn't honor my father and my mother, I knew what was happening. Wait till your father gets home. Or, wooden spoon, switch, whatever she could get her hands on. Do you know that our God is the same way? Oh, He's not violent with us. Don't misunderstand me. But He will let us know when we step out of line. He will let us know when our spirit's not in tune with Him. And he's talked to me about it before. And he says, hey, you need to tighten up here. You need to stop doing this. You need to start doing this. Yes, Lord. I'm sorry. Move on. What happens if we dwell on these things? What happens if just like that simple television show I told you about, what happens if I sit there and I stew on, why can't I watch that? There's nothing wrong with that. It's a whole lot cleaner than 98% of the other stuff is on television. Why can't I watch, why can't I do that? What happens? Do we start getting frustrated? Do we start getting aggravated? Do we lose our joy? Do we lose our happiness? Is our salvation slipping and we don't even know it? Disobedience. Disobeying God's a sin, right? At work, if you disobey a direct order, that's insubordination. After twice, you're out. Just the way it is. The joy. We've got to have it. That's what separates us. We talked about the difference this morning. We talked about the beggar with the sores. And then we talked about the rich man. There's a difference in how we serve him. If we serve him out of have to, it's not service. That's slavery. That's not what we're after. That's not what he's after. He's after our willingness to follow him. He's after our willingness and serving him out of love. Let's jump over to 1 Corinthians for a minute. I cheated. I marked mine. Maybe I did. There's, a, there's not a first one up there. Ah, sorry about that. It's First First Corinthians six, verse nine. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves of mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. You can put me in that list. Not just one of them either. But ye are washed. It's gone. It's clean. He renewed the right spirit. He put that spirit of steadfastness in me. But then I've slipped up. And then we've messed up. And then we ask forgiveness and it comes back. And it's back and forth. It's back and forth. It's back and forth. And it doesn't have to be that way. 
That's where that right spirit comes in. That desire to intentionally do what we know is right. I don't want to fall, right? I don't want to walk out in the yard and trip over something when I'm out there telling Charlie to go feed the dogs because I'm not going to feed him. That's his job. So what do we do? When I go with him, one of us got a flashlight. You ever hold a flashlight for your dad? You holding that light for you or me, boy? You know how many times I heard that growing up? You know how many times I'm going to hear that with God, my father? I'm not. Because he's holding the light for me. And he knows where that light needs to be. And he shines that light right where I'm going to take my next step so that I don't fall. But when I start to lose that spirit, I start to drop off of that, that light, he doesn't move it. But I step away from it. And then I fall and bang my shin. And it hurts. And I get a scar. Because the wound heals, right? We can go back to that light, and that scar remains, and it's there, and I know what I've done. That's what that milk house testimony is all about, because I've got a scar, and I want you to know about it. You see the scar on my chin? That was two, June of 2003. That was a motorcycle crash. The one on my nose was September of 1995, and it was a car wreck. I got another one right here from the chest tube. The pain and the battles and the wounds are gone. But the scars are there. And it's our job to talk about them. Restore the joy of thy salvation, not my salvation, because I can't save anything. I can't even save leftovers. I'll leave them on the counter and forget about them. But he can save me. He can save you. And he did. And if he didn't, he can. Let's jump over to Ezekiel real quick. I'm trying to decide what I got written down here. If I'd write a little bit neater, I could read this a whole lot better. Did I, I didn't put that one on there either, did I, Lish? Oh, yes, I did. Good work. Ezekiel 18. Verse 31. It says, Cast away from you all your transgressions, whereby ye have transgressed, and make you a new heart and a new spirit. For why will ye die, O house of Israel? He's saying, Cast, excuse me, cast this stuff away. Do it. Why will you die? If we don't, we're dead. And not just an earthly death, an eternal death. Separation from God. I don't want that. Second Corinthians 3.17. Then I'm done bouncing around in the Bible, I promise. I can't say that. Now the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is freedom. Freedom. Do we want to talk about freedom in the United States? Do we want to talk about freedom as American citizens? Absolutely. We want to be free to do whatever we want to. All but Christian, you can't do that because you're a Christian. You're not free to do whatever you want. You've got to do what God says. You're right. But that's true freedom. I didn't understand it when I didn't have to live under mom and dad's rules why things were so crazy. It's like life got absolutely silly when I had to start paying my own bills. I couldn't afford to go out and do anything anymore. I had to save my money. There was no freedom anymore. That freedom I thought I was going to get when I moved out was not existent. And I look back and I think of the freedom that I had under mom and dad's roof. Yeah, I had to be home at a certain time. Woo! If I was a couple minutes late, you know what I had to deal with? Boy, were you late. Because I didn't want to speed on the way home. Okay, get in the house. It was that simple, right? 
Oh, he might take my car keys. I might not have to go out the next night. Woo. But now I can make my choices, but I can't do it because of something else. There's an oppression there. As a Christian, I can do whatever I want to do. I'm free. All I got to do is love him. All I got to do is listen to him. He doesn't care if I wear a gray shirt and black pants. I don't have to wear blue pants. I don't have to wear brown pants. I can wear whatever I want. He's going to tell me what is wrong. He loves me. He gives me freedom. I'm not held down by that beer bottle anymore, Rudy. I'm not tied down by that thing. I can make clear thoughts. I'm not, my mouth is clean. Right? I don't say those words. I think them. I still know them. I'm still real good at them, but I don't use them. And that's okay because God's helped me with that too. It's not, I don't have to fit this box. I don't have to live like this is the only place I got to stand. I've got freedom because it's not a guideline, a set of rules. It's a set of guidelines. Hey, follow me. Don't worry about page 267. We'll get to that next week. We're about page 1,374 right now. Because God's got a plan for you. And He's got a plan for me. And he says, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit in me. Don't take your spirit away. And then He says, very simply, restore the joy of thy salvation. Be happy. Be real happy. Because you know what? I don't know about you, but he puts things in our, in our path on purpose. Two weeks ago, we talked in our Sunday school class, we talked about Isaac. We talked about how he had went into the Philistine area and he was living and he built, dug three wells. The first well, his shepherds got beat, beat out of. And the second well, they beat him out of. And the third one, they sat still. And he built a house, built an altar, and then he built a house. And then the king came up to him and said, Hey, what are you doing? He said, Hey, what are you doing? He drew the line of stand. He backed up enough. He sought God's help and he backed up just enough. And he stopped. He drew the line. If they had to come any closer, it'd have been violence. But it was just enough. So yesterday we talked about how, or today we talked about Jacob stealing the blessing from Esau and how he should have let God do it. Jacob went ahead because his mom told him that there was a promise there that the younger would, the older would serve the younger. And mom kind of jammed him up. That's how women do us, right? Just like Eve. I'm going to get in trouble for that when I get home. I'm not even looking over there. I'm kidding. But sometimes we get to cart before the horse and we think that we're better than God and we're smarter than God and we're able to do things because God said he's going to do it, but it's just not fast enough for me. That takes away joy. When we can sit back and think about the freedom that comes with it. Jacob didn't have to fight. Jacob didn't have to trick. God would let him do that with just being there. Because God had already promised that. Has he promised us that if we're saved and we're living for him, we're going to make it to heaven? Yeah. He's promised us a home in heaven. I don't care if it's a mansion. I don't care if it's a cabin. I don't care if it's a single wide. I don't care if it's a mini house. I don't care. I just want to get there. I just want to get there. And I'm not going to be there if my heart's not clean. I'm not going to be there if there's no right spirit. I'm not going to be there if there's no joy in my salvation. Get it? Got it? Good. Who needs to pray? Are your hearts clear this evening? Let's stand. That song which she played for the offering, Oh, how marvelous, oh, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. I can't qualify it. I don't know how deep it is. I haven't found the end of it. And I'm done trying. I'm going to stay right in the middle somewhere so I can get as much of it as I can. Because I love Him. All hearts clear this evening. Well, I thank you for your attention. He surely is good. Heavenly Father, we love you, Lord. We thank you for being with us tonight.
We thank you for bringing us here for the, for the services. We thank you for being with us, for having your presence with us here in the service. As you return us to our home safely, God, protect us, guide us, look after us. Dismiss us from this service, but not from your presence, Lord. We love you and we thank you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Choir practice, board meeting tomorrow.